Hello and welcome to Defective Doctrine with Pastor David. Well, this is possibly the most controversial and most complicated topic I've addressed in this series. So I'm only going to address one specific claim, namely that Israel and the church are two separate entities, eternally separated in the plan of God. Funnily enough, this same defective doctrine is found at two opposite theological extremes. On the one hand, there's dispensationalism, which teaches that the church was an afterthought to mere parenthesis in God's plan. And once the church has been removed at the rapture, Israel will once again take centre place and centre stage in the outworkings of God's purposes. On the other hand, are the replacement theologians, who believe the church has replaced Israel in the unfolding of the plan of God, a belief which tragically has often led to anti-Semitism and persecution of the Jews. The big problem that underlies both of these positions is that they both seem to interpret Christian church to mean Gentile church. Hence, replacement theologians have sometimes insisted that in order to join the Christian church, Jewish followers of Jesus had to become Gentiles. Whereas dispensationalists sometimes teach that the Jews don't actually have to become Christians at all. The thing is, the Christian church was never meant to be a Gentile organization. That was not what it was created to be. For one thing, just remember that all the early Christians were Jews who kept living as Jews. And then look at this, Matthew 16, verse 18, where Jesus tells Peter that he will build his church. And as far as I know, nobody doubts that this refers to the church that was started on the day of Pentecost. But the Greek word used in the New Testament about the church, ecclesia, is actually used in the Greek translation of the Old Testament to refer to the Israelite assembly. So Jesus isn't introducing a new concept, the church. It's just revamping something that the disciples were already very familiar with. And in the same vein, Jesus' choice of 12 apostles is clearly meant to reflect the number of Israelite tribes. It's another sign that Jesus is revamping Israel. The 12 are the heads of the true assembly of Israel, which is being gathered around Jesus, the promised Jewish Messiah. And in Romans 11, Paul talks about the olive tree from which unbelieving Jews have been broken off, whereas believing Gentiles have been grafted in. Now it's clear that the olive tree represents something bigger than just a church. These unbelieving Jews were never part of the church. It must be a picture of Israel, the people of God, redefined and refocused. And Peter confirms this. In 1 Peter 2, 9, he uses a whole bunch of titles about the church, which comes straight out of the Old Testament. A chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. And if those exalted titles, which once referred to Israel, can now be applied to the Christians that Peter is writing to, who were most likely a mixture of Jewish and Gentile believers, it's obvious that you can't easily separate the church from Israel. And Paul makes the same point in Ephesians chapter 2. Gentiles are now fellow citizens with the saints, members of God's household, singular, one new humanity in Jesus, one spiritual temple for the Holy Spirit. Basically, the whole New Testament insists that it's not your ethnicity, but your faith in Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, that makes you a member of the people of God. And hence, since there is absolutely no indication anywhere in the New Testament that God now has two separate peoples, insisting on an eternal dividing line between Israel and the church is clearly a defective doctrine. Thank you for watching. <laughs>